Hey everyone, this is Steve from Flight Brothers and today I'm checking out this all new Diatone Thin Naze 32 flight controller board. Now you may have seen my review of the original Diatone Naze 32 board, which was pretty much terrible. Had some faulty components, had some things just not working right on it. And after seeing my review, Diatone went ahead and discontinued this product and started putting out this newer Diatone Thin Naze 32 that I'm going to show you today. Now the original one was based off of a Rev 5. You can tell by the arrow being in line with the USB port and the alignment of the different components. The uh, receiver inputs here, the motor outputs here. It just all falls in line with a Rev 5. But again, a lot of problems and the products discontinued. So this is the new one. This version of the Naze 32, Thin Naze 32 from Diatone, is based off of a Rev6B. And you can easily see the similarities if you compare it to a regular Naze 32 Rev6. You can see the arrow is pointing forward on the board, the USB port located on the side, and all of the receiver inputs lining up the same as the Naze, 36, uh, Naze 32 Rev6 regular board, but of course this includes all of these uh, micro JST connectors instead. Now, speaking of those micro JST connectors, a lot of people like them, don't mind them, a lot of people hate them. I gotta be honest, I fly the uh, Diatone F3 board that uses a lot of these micro JST connectors and I don't have an issue with them. I haven't had them break off, haven't had them come, un come unplugged in uh, crashes, so I assume that would be similar to this. And a nice thing about it is if you had to swap a flight controller for any reason, it happened really easily by unplugging those. So, you know, some people like them, some people hate them. It's kind of up to you to decide if it's right for you. Now what makes this a Rev6B is the little diode. Now at first, I wasn't uh, sure where it was located, but after checking with Diatone, I found out that that little component right there next to this connector, that's the diode that you want to look for for a Rev6B. That's going to limit the power output to the different 5 volt uh, sources around the board. So when you plug in a USB, connect, uh, USB cord into the connector, it's not going to backfeed the 5 volts into the PDB, out into the ESCs, and cause any of those issues with calibrating the ESCs and the other things that we've seen from regular Rev6 boards. So it's nice that they did that. And also, this board does work with SBUS. So so uh, it has those two things going for it as a Rev6, which is great. Now, the next thing I want to mention is the cabling that comes with it. It comes with all the necessary cables to hook up the things you need. It has the connectors here that will go in for your uh, receiver inputs up here. It has a, another similar one for your motor outputs. It has the small two pin ones for your VBAT and your buzzer. It also has the uh, another two pin one for, for the other things. And actually this is your uh, receiver plug here. Now the interesting thing is that this receiver plug is all nice silicone wire, which is fantastic. But it's the only one that's nice silicone wire, so it's too bad. I wish they were all nice silicone wire because it's so much better to work with. It's not uh, affected by heat like the regular uh, PVC wire that you have in all these white ones. And the other problem I had with these, and I mentioned diet to, to Diatone, and hopefully they fix it in the future, is that, uh, for instance, this jack that is for your motor outputs right here, okay? This is all white wires. And two of these white wires are power, 5 volt and ground on this end near that diode. But they're all white, so it could very easily, if you're not really sure what these are, you plug these in, you've got bare ends on this side, and if you uh, are running anything with 5 volts and they cross, you might have an issue. Uh, I would really love to see all the signal wires white but I always want to see a red and a black on the any power sources so you, you can easily identify them and you can easily tell if there is uh, a cords that should be run to power for any reason so I wish that was the case with these cords but it does come with all the necessary cables you need to hook it up 
I should also mention that this flight controller is the one that has been shipping from the beginning in all of the Tyrant uh, plug and fly frames that have gone out. People have been nervous that the original thin naze is the one that's been on the Tyrant and this one's not being made anymore and the Tyrants include this one which is a much better board. The next thing I want to check is will this flash well and easily to beta flight which so many people are running and also how is it going to look on screen with the gyros if you saw my original review of this one when i plugged it into the screen you could just see the whole uh, image of the quad in clean flight was just spinning there's a there's a video of it right there it was just spinning on its own without moving so i'm just going to make sure that everything seems functional from a bench standpoint before I mount this into a, uh, a frame and actually fly it for you. So let's uh, head up to the computer and check that out. Alright, so I've got my clean flight configurator open and I got my new Naze 32 Thin ready to plug in for the first time. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Alright, she's flashing like she's supposed to. That looks good. Going up here, definitely opened up a new COM port, so I'm going to hit connect and I'll see what happens. Look at that. I'm not touching it at all, it's just laying on the desk here. And it looks solid this time. So much better than the last one. She remember was just spinning on its own just ridiculously. Let's just see how it reacts to my movements of it. Okay, so I'm scooching it around. seems to be right on excellent all right so i'm going to leave that plugged in let's go and see if it'll accept a beta flight flash gonna disconnect gonna go over to the firmware flasher i'm um, gonna do a full chip erase and going to load local firmware which i have right on the desktop beta flight 2.6.1 Let's see if it'll accept a flash. Seems to be working well. Programming successful. Okay, let's go back and connect and see how she's working. Nice. Nice and solid still. Doing everything it's supposed to. So obviously they've gone ahead and taken care of some of the issues that uh, we've addressed. Seems to be a much more solid board. Um, I would have no reservations about installing this on my next build. In fact, I plan to. So we'll give it a shot. Um, but let's take it back down to the bench and just have some final words. So as you can see, Everything looks solid on this board. I, I've been reassured from Diatone that they took care of the issues that the original Thin Nays had, that they've fixed this up, and so far, from everything I can tell from it just being here in my hands and plugging it into Clean Flight, it looks like they've taken care of those issues. It looks like this is going to be a solid board, and honestly, I don't have any concerns about putting this into a frame and going and flying with it. The one thing that I'll keep an eye out for is that standard problem with Rev6s where the gyros are so super sensitive that you might have issues with some vibrations causing some weird things. So if I encounter that, I'll definitely give you an update and let you know if this board is best used with some vibration dampening mounts to help uh, correct that issue. We'll find out. I have a Tyrant frame coming this week, and I intend to put this in there uh, and do a build with it, and we'll see how it turns out. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, I want to thank you for watching our channel, for checking out this review. And if you want to see more reviews like this, then please like, subscribe, share my channel, and uh, hopefully we'll be getting some more products in to review for you soon. Thanks a lot, guys, and uh, we'll catch you next time.